If you would like, you can grab a bolster instead of a block or a pillow to sit on. We're going to start in a seat today. And start to center in. When you come to your seat, make sure that it's a seat that feels comfortable for you. So for me, I like to get up on height and pull the flesh of the butt back or the hamstring and the glute back, internally rotating the meat of the leg so that you can actually sit more in front of your sit bones and upright nice and tall through your spine. Bring your hands face down on your lap and take a moment to settle. Close your eyes if that feels comfortable for you. Otherwise, just allow your eyelids to soften and your vision to come to the earth. Begin to bring a deeper breath into your lungs. Feel a density in your pelvis. And as you breathe out, imagine you're just sinking a little deeper into the earth as you simultaneously reach up through the spine, through the crown of the head. As you stretch and lengthen your breath in both directions, notice where the breath is moving in your body. In the practice of yoga, one of the goals is to decompress the spine. And a simple way to do that is to breathing into the full of your lungs, more into the back of the body not just the front of the body to the chest and the belly but to the ribs breathing into the kidneys and the spaces that are more unseen and join your hands by a prayer at heart center anjali mudra a gesture of offering of reverence in this class today the invitation of the intention is to bring gratitude into your life. So often gratitude can be overlooked and the more that we lean into what we're grateful for, the more abundant we can feel in our own being. So take three more cycles of breath here. And just notice what are you grateful for in this moment right now? It could be for the home that you're practicing in, the breath that fills your lungs, or even the sounds that you can hear outside. Maybe it's birds chirping. There's life all around us when we can lean into it and bring presence into that life. Heavy your pelvis down, inhale, circle, sweep, reach your arms high to the sky. Exhale, bring your right arm down, reach your left arm way in line with your ear, lateral side bend. Heavy the pelvis down into the earth, inhale, rise back through center. Exhale, lateral side bend the other way, reach your left arm down to the earth and reach up through that right arm. Heavy down into your right sit bone. Inhale, come back through center. Exhale again, lateral side bend. This time, cactus your left arm back into space. Press your left shoulder blade onto the back of the ribs. Pull your bottom shoulder back as well. Exhale, round elbow towards knee. Close that gap. Inhale, open up and lean it back into space. Exhale, round elbow towards knee. Straighten out through your left arm. Inhale, come back through center. Exhale, lateral side bend the other way. Reach your right arm up. Inhale, cactus your right arm back. Exhale, round elbow towards knee, close. Inhale, open up and lean back. Exhale, round elbow to knee, close. Stretch your arm long, heavy down into your right sit bone to come back through center. Bring your arms to a cactus shape, breath in. Exhale, bring your hands to Hakini Mudra. All of your finger pads are touching with a gentle bend in your knuckle joints and a, quite a lot of bend in your elbows. Breath in. Exhale, twist towards the left. Inhale to center. Exhale to the right. Inhale through center. Exhale to the left, active rotation. Inhale through center. 
exhale rotate to the right one more each way inhale through center exhale to the left inhale through center and exhale to the right come back through center bring your hands to that prayer and gently bow your head towards your fingertips giving a little gratitude to southeast asia to the great motherland of india for all the teachings and teachers there that brought the teachings here to the west so that we are able to be here in this beautiful practice lift your skull up and come to a tabletop position as you land in your tabletop look down at your hands spread nice and wide and evenly through your fingertips and line up your wrist creases with the front edge of the mat inhale lift your tailbone up melt your heart spinal extension exhale press your hands and your knees into the mat round to a deep full flexion again inhale move with your breath articulating from the tailbone as you melt your heart cow spine exhale round to a deep full cat spine last time inhale cow spine spinal extension tug your hands back to the knees and exhale round press the tops of the feet down as you find that deep flexion come to a little bit more of a neutral spine create barrel rolls with your hips circumduction of the spine so we're just getting all the spinal movements out of the way the lateral spinal movement rotation extension flexion and now circumduction you can bring your hips way back by your heels or way up forward by your hands two more breaths here land back through a neutral position inhale and reach your right leg high to the sky with a bent knee press your heel up as if you were like kicking the floor good tuck your toes and lift that lift off your left knee to a three-legged dog wrap your right hip down more and then bend your knee open your hip squeeze your heel towards your sit bone work to stay level through both of your shoulders create a big circle with your knee in one direction and then take that big circle with your knee in the other direction Straighten your leg and square your hip. Wrap those toes down. Maybe look down and see that you can see your toes. The hips are square. Soften the left knee back down to the earth. And lower your right knee down. Second side. So that kind of rewinding motion again. Reach your left leg up. Push the heel towards the sky. Keep engagement through your core. Breathe. And begin to tuck your toes if they're not tucked lift off your right knee and stretch your left leg higher towards the sky as you straighten out through the right leg look down see that you can see your toes are pointing straight down and lift up from the strength of the left inner thigh and then bend your knee open your hip stay semi-neutral through your shoulders the right shoulder still will collapse a little bit but lift the right of the right head of the arm bone up into space Create a circle with your knee in one direction and take that circle with your knee in the other direction. Straighten out through your leg, square your hip. Now lift that leg up from the left inner thigh and exhale slow motion, lower the right knee down and the left knee down to your tabletop position. Lower your forearms down to the mat and walk your knees back until you come to a sphinx pose. Pull your right heel towards your sit bone and reach around with your hand to grab your foot. I'm not going to do this one. <laughs> pull your heel towards your sit bone. As you pull the heel towards the hip, actively push your foot into your hand. And if this is really tight for you and for whatever reason you're not able to grab your foot, active range of motion is really great. So bending your knee, bringing your heel as close as you can towards the bum and then straightening it back out. Actively press your left thigh down into the mat. Take one more breath here and slowly release your foot down. Bring your legs back in through center if they escaped the midline. Pull your opposite heel in, reach around with your left hand to grab your foot. Try to grab for the big toe side and breathe. And just reflect, how can you begin to create this 
attitude of gratitude within your life today off of the mat. So often we can change the way that we feel inside of our body, inside of our mind, simply by taking in everything that we're grateful for. From the first breath we take up in the morning to the bed that supports us when we go to sleep at night. And the, the tens of thousands of things that we can be grateful for in between. Slowly release your foot, so coming back to that neutral sphinx pose. Drop your right ear over towards your right shoulder. Tuck your chin more towards your collarbone. And then bring your left ear over towards your left shoulder. Lift your skull up a little. Bring your chin back down. Bring your right ear over towards the right shoulder and lift your skull up. Then to come back through center. Soften your chest down to the mat. Bring your arms by your sides. So set yourself up for cobra pose, but floating cobra. So don't press your hands into the mat. Instead, use the power of the legs. Press your legs down and lift your chest up, float your hands. Spread through your toes and glue all 10 toes onto the mat. Heavy your pelvis. Exhale, release, lower down. One more like that, inhale, rise up to a cobra. Float your hands, keep your shoulders lifted up and then lower your hands down, press into your hands and rise up to whatever size cobra you'd like. In cobra, the hips are down, so focus on your pelvic bone really staying rooted down, the tops of the hips rather, those can lift a little. Tug your hips back as you pull your heart through. Come all the way down. Press your way up through tabletop or plank and send your hips up and back to a downward facing dog. Now in your down dog, make your feet a little bit wider as wide as mats distance apart. Grab for the outside edges of your sticky mat. Bend your knees more than you might think. Keep a tone to the belly so your belly's not exploding out. Pull the belly up and in and lift your hips even higher to the sky. Send the tops of the thigh bones back. Lift your shoulders up. From the back of the heart, press down and out through the arms, through the mat, into the earth. Breathe. You're working to melt just behind the heart. Press your shoulder blades onto the back of the ribs just a little more. And then release your sticky mat. Ground your hands or your fingertips on the ground. Walk your hands back until your heels come down but keep going so the biggest mistake people make here is not going back far enough you want your hips so far back that there's like no weight in your toes counter reach your hands forward so it's not a typical forward fold it's a functional forward fold line up the outside edge of your feet with the long edge of the mat so that your toes your big toes especially are pointing inward a little bit Micro bend your knees, keep sending the hips back and breathe. Deep, full breaths into the back of the body. On an inhale, halfway lift, glide your hands up your shins, find length through your spine. Exhale, fold. Press your feet down into the mat. Inhale, glide your hands up the shins, up the thighs, all the way to stand. Step your feet back to hip distance apart. Spread nice and wide and evenly through your toes. Release your arms by the sides. Inhale, reach your arms up as you press your feet down into the mat. Exhale, grab your right wrist. I bend up and over towards the left. Micro bend your knees. Inhale, rise through center. Switch your clasp and take that side bend the other direction. Inhale, come back through center. Exhale, cactus your arms and bring your palate back into space. The tops of the ears go back without cranking your neck back. Inhale, pull navel to spine, reach your arms high. Heel toe your feet just a touch closer, maybe even hip distance or uh, tough feet touching distance. And bring your hands to Hakini Mudra by heart center, what we used earlier. Gentle bend in the knuckle joints so you're not hyper extending through your fingers. Take a breath in and exhale, sink a little lower. Find something that feels like your legs are working here in this chair pose, Utkatasana. Inhale, exhale, twist towards the left. Hook your right elbow outside of the left knee. Keep your hips level, pull your left knee back into space. Inhale, come back through center. 
Follow the breath, exhale, twist the opposite way. Maybe you gaze up towards the sky, shifting the gaze. Inhale, come back through center, reach your arms high, chair pose. Exhale, hinge at your hips, tone the belly on the way down, forward fold. Inhale, get length through your spine. Exhale, fold, start to curl your hands out and land in a plank pose, palakasana. Now in your plank, take a peek down at your foundation, wrists are still facing straight ahead, fingers are nice and spread evenly. Root down through the perimeter of the palms. Keep your hips lifted so they're not going so high that you're going towards a down dog, but rather they're just slightly lower than your shoulders. So from the crown of the head, there's a straight line all the way back to the heels. Breathe for three, two, one. Shift your shoulders past your wrists, lower your knees. Half push up, elbows come in by the rib cage. Lower your hips, pull the heart through to a cobra pose, tug your hands back towards the hips, tuck your toes and lift your hips up to a downward facing dog. Inhale, reach your right leg high to the sky. Exhale, pull your knee in towards your nose, stack the shoulders above the wrist. So when you land in this pose, you're essentially in a plank with the hips lifted as high as you can. Pull your heel more towards your sit bone. Feel that core engage. Inhale, reach your right leg high to the sky. Exhale, pulse, knee towards right armpit. Lift it as high up as you can. Inhale, reach your leg up and long. Exhale, knee towards left armpit. Inhale, reach it high. And exhale, knee towards nose. Plant your foot in between your hands. Start to lower your back knee down nice and softly to the earth. Squeeze your legs towards one another. From the pelvis, press down into the earth and rise up to a low lunge. As you arrive in your low lunge, make your feet hip distance apart. Sink your hips down and low and lift up and long through the spine. Bring your arms forward a touch and bring your hands to Hakini Mudra one more time. Press your finger pads into one another. This time the elbows are more extended, so Hakini Mudra is about, I don't know, a couple inches above your eyesight and above your eyes. As you breathe, breathe more breath into the back of the body with each inhale. And as you exhale, pull your navel in towards the spine. One more breath, inhale, lift up the Hakini Mudra just a touch higher. As you exhale, bring your hands to a prayer. Bring the prayer behind your skull. Send your elbow tips high towards the sky as you press your heart forward into space. Inhale, re-engage navel towards spine. Bring your hands down and straighten out through your right leg. Press your right big toe down into the mat and pull your right hip back as your left hip wraps forward. Connect to the rhythm of your breath. Inhale and bend into your front knee. Bring your back knee to a little bit of a hover. Pull your heart through. Exhale, straighten out and fold. One more like that. Inhale, cow lunge. Lift up through the head. Pull the chest through and the palate back. Exhale, straighten and fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Get a little length through your spine. Send the tailbone back into space. Exhale, bend into your front knee. Ground the left hand on the earth. Use your right hand, press your left shoulder back into space, trace the collarbone, reach your right arm high. Pull both of your shoulders back and lean back for a lunge twist. Inhale, exhale, pivot to the outside edge of your left foot, heel toe your front foot just a little bit or about halfway down the mat, depending on what your range of motion is. Inhale, lift through your hips, reach your right arm way in line with your ear. Exhale, release your hips down, bring your right hand by the back leg. Inhale again, reach up, get length. Exhale, release your hips down. Two more pulses like that. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, lower down. This time, rise up and find your version of side plank. So it could just be stacking, your, stacking or staggering your feet. You can lower a shin down and reach your leg up 
or you can stay in that version that we were in a minute ago. Take one more breath. From the left shoulder, press down and out through the left arm, through the hand into the earth. Ground your right hand, Palakasana Plank Pose. Either flow through a vinyasa or come back to down dog. You can always pull your heart through straight into up dog if you want to skip chaturanga. If you are doing chaturanga, really honor the pose and hold it. And we'll all meet in downward facing dog. Take three deep breaths here, reconnecting to the ujjayi breath. In your down dog, keep a gentle bend in your knees. Squeeze your outer shins in. Send your upper inner thighs really high to the sky with bent knees. From the back of the heart, press down and out through the arms into the earth. Inhale, reach your left leg high, as high as it'll go with internal rotation, wrapping your left hip down. Exhale, pulse your knee towards your nose. Practice on lifting the sides of your waist up and come really high onto that back right toe. Inhale, reach your left leg up. Exhale, pull your left knee towards your left armpit. Get as much lift as you can. Inhale, reach up high. Exhale, knee towards right armpit. Lots of lift. Inhale, reach high. Exhale, knee towards nose. Plant your foot in between your hands. Start to straighten out through your left knee. Breathe from the pelvis, stretch down and out through the legs and long through the spine. What does gratitude mean to you? See, for a while, I couldn't quite get past the basic needs of what I was grateful for. Food, shelter, my practice, my friends. But when you go deeper and when you just look around, your world, and you're looking for gratitude, you find so much more. Inhale, bend into your front knee, bring your back knee to a hover, pull the heart through, cow lunge. Exhale, straighten and fold to a cat lunge. One more, inhale, cow lunge, pull your palate back. Exhale, straighten and fold, cat lunge. Inhale, get length through the spine. Exhale, bend into your front knee. Ground your right hand. Pivot to the outside edge of your back foot. Heel toe your front foot halfway down the mat. So your left foot's halfway down. Reach your left arm high. Inhale. Exhale, lower your hips down. Bring your left arm by your leg. Inhale, reach up. Reach your left arm long. Exhale, lower your hips down, bring the left hand behind you. One more, inhale, lift up. Exhale, lower down. This time, rise up and find your version of a side plank and breathe for three, two. Pull both shoulders back, one, and release. Your hands down to your plank pose, flow through whatever vinyasa works for you, and we'll all meet in downward facing dog. Breathe in, and breathe out. Inhale, come high into your tiptoes. Exhale, take a deep bend in the knees. At the end of your exhale, hop, step, or float your way up to a forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, toe in the belly, send your goings back. Exhale, fold. Press into your feet. Inhale, circle, sweep. Reach your arms high to the sky. Exhale, join your hands in a prayer by heart center. Transfer your weight over towards your left foot. Pull your right knee in towards your chest. Find a little balance here. Pull the left toes up so your foot is active. And from here, keep your hands in a prayer by heart center and start to tilt your trunk forward. You can bend as much as you need in your standing leg. That will help bending your knee helps connect to the strength around your muscles. So you could also keep it straight depending on what works for you. Start to tilt that chest way forward. Pull your left heel towards your sit bone. So you're in like a bent knee warrior three. Once you feel like your chest is parallel to the earth, straighten out through your left leg Work towards making that left leg parallel to the earth as well. Lift up through the chest and the head. Wrap your left hip down. Breathe more breath into that back body. 
and then bend into your front knee, step back, crescent lunge. See that your feet are hip distance apart. Stack your knee in line with your ankle and inhale, reach your arms up, crescent lunge. Keep sinking your hips down and forward. Squeeze your inner thighs towards one another. From the pelvis, press down and out through the legs, lift up and long through your spine, through the crown, out the fingertips. Grab your left wrist and side bend over towards the right. Inhale, come back through center. Switch your clasp and take the side bend over towards the left. Inhale, come back through center. Bring your hands to Hakini Mudra. Bring Hakini Mudra forward so you at least can see it. Keep a bend in your knuckle joints and your elbow joints. Inhale, exhale, twist towards the right. Inhale, breathe into that back body. Exhale, upright twist towards the right. Inhale, exhale, start to twist and fold. Hook your left elbow outside of the right knee for a deep twist. Press your back thigh back into space. Revolved lunge. Maybe you shift your gaze and look up or maybe you stretch your arms out, one towards the earth and one towards the ground. Reconnect your hands to touch. Inhale, come back through center, pivot your back heel down onto the earth, find warrior two. Heel toe your front foot in a little bit. Now your front heel lines up with the middle of the back arch. Send your back thigh back into space as you widen your front knee towards the pinky toe. Inhale, flip your palm reach forward and reverse your warrior. Lean it back. Exhale, come to side angle, elbow towards your thigh. Reach your arm way in line with your ear. Bend your elbow, bring your hand around to the opposite shoulder blade. From your left hip, press down and out through your left leg and twist your right torso underneath you. Kick your head into the forearm. Inhale, reverse your warrior. And exhale, come towards warrior two. Interlace your hands behind your back. Lift up through your heart space, breath in. Exhale, hinge at your hips, bow forward to a humble warrior. Lift your shoulders up and drop your hands over the back body. Engage more through your front hip, especially the back side of it. If you're feeling cramping, scoop your left or your right hip underneath you a little bit more. Exhale, release your hands down to the inside edge of your front foot. Pivot on your back toes, heel toe your front foot wide. Let your right toes go off on a diagonal. Squeeze your legs towards one another, lizard lunge. You can stay here or you can lower your forearms down onto a block or to the earth. If you want Twisted Monkey, engage the back heel, pulling your heel, or back hamstring rather, pull your heel towards your sit bone. Reach your right arm forward, thumb facing up, bring your arm back to grab for the pinky toe side of your foot. Breathe. Some things in life aren't very easy to be grateful for, especially more unfortunate things that begin to happen. Whether it's pain that we feel in our bodies or trauma that resides in our heart, a lot of stuff can mm, perpetuate in our being that we don't naturally feel grateful for, but you can start to kind of create a spin on it. So, you know, if you're not feeling good in your body, that's okay, acknowledge that, don't bypass it, but also remember that just having a body and being a human, that is a celebration in itself. Slowly release your foot, bring your arm forward and shift your hips back to a half split point, your right toes towards the sky. You'll see that I have the block. Um, if you're tighter in the backs of the legs, you can place a block underneath your hands to just bring the earth closer to you. And this helps keep a nice long spine and keeping the integrity of the low back as you stretch through the back of the leg. <clears throat> and 
begin to bend into your front knee. Lift off of your back leg and step back, either flow through your vinyasa or just shift your hips up and back to downward facing dog. Breathe in. Open mouth, H-A, release, let it go. Inhale, come high onto your tiptoes. Spike those heels. Exhale, take a deep bend in the knees. At the end of your exhale, hop, step, or float your way up to a forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, get length through your spine. Exhale, fold. Press into the earth, inhale, circle, sweep, reach your arms high. Exhale, join your hands at a prayer and pull the right knee in towards the chest. Find some balance. Start to tilt your trunk forward. Keep a bent knee. And attempt to get your trunk completely horizontal to the ground. From that place, start to straighten out through the right leg. Flex your toes towards the earth, the right toes, to help square the hips, stay engaged through your core. Breathe breath into the full of your lungs. From the pelvis, stretch out long through the bones of your legs and out from the pelvis through the spine out the crown. Bend into your front knee, take a generous step back. Once you feel those right toes ground, squeeze your legs towards one another, rise up, crescent lunge. Grab your right wrist, take a little side bend over towards the left as you sink your hips down to the earth. Press down into the legs, inhale back through center. Switch your clasp and take the side bend the other way. Inhale through center. Bring your hands to Hakini Mudra and bring Hakini Mudra off on a diagonal. Keep a bend in your knuckle joints. Inhale, breathe more breath into that back body. Exhale, twist towards the left. Two more breaths before we go deeper. Inhale. Exhale, twist. Last inhale. Exhale, start to bow forward, hook your right elbow outside of the left knee. My shoulder is a little bit sticky, so I'm not actually pressing that much into my elbow, but you know, if you want more resistance, if you want more depth on the twist, press your tricep into the outer edge of the thigh. Maybe spread your arms wide like wings, breath in. And as you exhale, start to unwind, pivot the back heel down, warrior two pose. Pivot your back toes in a little bit. Line up your front heel with the middle of the back arch. Pull your shoulder blades down the back of the body so your arms are in line with your shoulders. Warrior two. Inhale, flip your palm, reach forward, and reverse your warrior. Bring your hand down the back thigh. Stay straight through the back knee. Exhale, sign angle. Elbow towards your thigh. Reach your arm away in line with your ear for extended side angle. Bend your elbow, bring your hand behind for the opposite shoulder blade. Actively kick your hand or your head into the forearm from your right hip. Press down and out through the right leg. Stretch up and long and out through that right elbow. From the pelvis, press down through the legs. Inhale, reverse your warrior. Exhale, come back to warrior two. Interlace your hands, uh, opposite thumb on top. Inhale, lift your heart up. Exhale, hinge at your hips, humble warrior or devotional warrior. Lift your shoulders up and try to get your left shoulder to the inside edge of the left knee. Slowly release your hands down to the inside edge of your front foot. Pivot your back toes forward. Heel toe your front foot down to and facing off on a diagonal. And again, you can come onto a block or you can just stay in lizard lunge here. Keep the integration in your legs as you hug your front heel towards the back knee and the back knee towards the front heel. Breathe. cultivating this kind of Hanuman energy, which uh, Hanuman is like 
very humble, very devotional. Um, it's a, the more that we can create that energy in our life and on our practice, that also brings in gratitude. Simply being devoted to looking for gratitude everywhere we go, looking for ways to bring abundance into our lives. Like really we are the co-creators of our own life, so we get to create whatever we want out of the circumstances that we're given. If you're gonna get, do Twisted Monkey, now's your chance. Pull your heel towards your sit bone, reach around with your left hand to grab your foot. Bring your hands down to the block or to the mat and shift your hips back for Adra Hanumanasana, half split. Point your left toes up, spread through the toes. Drive your left heel down into the mat and tug back into space. Breathe. bend into your front knee tuck your back toes lift off of the back knee plant your hands on the mat and step back to your plank last option for a vinyasa take it or don't and meet in child's pose toes together knees hip distance or wider forehead to the mat keep getting a little lift through your shoulders and wrap your triceps down towards the yoga mat from the back of the heart, stretch out long through the arms, through the fingertips. And breathe. Thread the needle, weave your left arm through the right, find a little shoulder stretch. Press your right palm into the mat as you tug your left arm back into space. Unwind, come back to the center, second side. Weave your right arm through the left. Find a little shoulder stretch here. Come all the way back through the center. Sit up on your heels, shift your hips to be in the middle of your mat and make your way onto your back body in a supine position. As you arrive on your back body, Pull your knees in towards your chest. Give yourself a little squeeze. Wrap your forearms around the knees. Rock a little side to side and left to right. And then bring your legs to a straight position. Or ending with a little bit of core today. Pull your toes down towards your face. Shut your arms up towards your toes. And notice what's going on in your low back. A lot of times our low back is lifting off of the mat which would be an anterior tilt in the pelvis. Do the opposite, tuck your tailbone and feel your low back press into the mat and the butt actually kind of lift. And from this place, reach your left hand towards your left toe, your right hand towards your right toe, and just kind of move through these motions really slow and controlled. Keep your shoulder blades off of the mat and keep your back pressing into the earth and then start to move through to the opposite. So instead of reaching for the same toe, with the same foot with the same hand, left wrist goes towards right toes. Right wrist goes towards left toes. And we all have different proportions. So if you can hardly touch your foot or you can't touch your foot at all, you're still working your core just as much as someone else as long as your shoulder blades are off the ground. Keep moving like this for about, I don't know, 10 more rounds of slow controlled movements. Breathe. Slowly soften your shoulder blades back down. Pull your knees in. 
Take a twist, arms come to a cactus, send your knees over towards the right and gaze towards the left. You could use your right hand and bring it on top of the left thigh for a little extra tension in the twist. Breathe, breath into the side body and melt your shoulder blade towards the earth as you stretch your left hip away from you. Inhale, pull your legs back through center, work your obliques. Exhale, take the twist over towards the left. Bring your left hand on top of the right thigh. Again, you can keep your gaze towards the ceiling if you want a neutral neck or follow the twist and gaze towards the right. Engage so those obliques pull your knees back and towards center. Grab your knees, pull your knees towards your armpits, happy baby, or bring your hands to the outside edges of your feet. Pull your feet down as you press your feet up into your hands. Ananda Balasana. Ground your sacrum on the ground and pull your lumbar spine up and in. And honor each and every curve of your spine here. Option to straighten out through one or both legs. Maybe rock your baby side to side a few times. Find what feels good in your body. And then come to a close. Wrap your forearms around your shins. Maybe you lift your shoulder blades off the mat. Come to a big ball. Inhale fully. And as you exhale, stretch your arms by your sides and your legs out long for Shavasana. Let go of any breath in your lungs. H-A. Inhale fully through your nose. Big open mouth. Exhale. Let it go. Take the next few moments to rest. And absorb the energy that you created on your mat today. Let go of tension in your forehead. Drop your tongue down from the roof of the mouth. And let your limbs sink deeper and deeper into the earth as the earth supports you in this moment in the here and the now. Shavasana. Relax in Shavasana as long as you would like. If you'd like a little closing without getting up, you can always just bring your hands to a prayer or one hand to your heart and the other on top of that. Bring your awareness back to the intention of class today of cultivating gratitude. As you breathe, Notice that you can be grateful for each and every breath that fills your lungs. You can bring gratitude into the simplest of things in your life. Even being really busy and having a full schedule can be something to be grateful for. Maybe not always are we super grateful that we're running on overload all the time, on overtime. But on the flip side of that, at least we have something going on. 
something that keeps us busy and something that maybe we're really passionate about and where we get to create change and cultivate more and more authentic community. Take as much time as you would like to rest and bathe in the Shavasana. Namaste.